Is this the beginning of the end? Are these the end times that the Bible talks about? Is this part of the day of the Lord that's described through Scripture? How much worse is this going to get? Or is this all with the virus, just a mere uproar, an overreaction, and a brief scare from people? Many questions have arisen these past couple of weeks causing headlines in the news, urgent response from the government, and unrest among the nations. Is this the next sign leading up to the great tribulation that Christ spoke of? The Bible declares that the time of the end of the world, the destruction of the earth, is determined by the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day of judgment. And the word of God has much to say about this. Whether this virus is part of the significant signs of Christ's soon coming return or not, one thing is for sure, that it is a time where we need to humble ourselves and return to God. The Bible is where we should be turning for the answers to these questions, not just the news or any rumor, for God has been revealing through prophecy the unfolding of events in history that have proven true over time. And when Jesus Christ comes again, he will bring judgment to all people to the ends of the earth. He will come as the righteous judge of the living and the dead. We've had outbreaks like this in the past, causing disruption and the functioning of nations, governments, and economies, such as the swine flu or the Ebola virus. But the effects of this virus have seemed to far surpass them all. How much of these are signs of the end times, I'm not sure. But what I do know is I've never seen anything like this before. Vast amounts of people are dying. Schools and stores are closing. Even entire nations are shutting down. One thing is sure that this is not normal and it is beginning to become serious. But the Bible calls us to be discerning and watchful. To be discerning in the sense that we are called not to believe everything we hear when we first hear but to test the spirits. Jesus said that many false religious leaders and false Christs will come claiming to be in his name and deceive many. And this has already happened with Muhammad through the deception of leading many people in the Islam faith. Others like Buddha and many religious leaders throughout the time. And Jesus also calls us to be watchful, to get ready and to be prepared for Christ's return. It tells that many scoffers will come mocking and ridiculing, saying, When will this coming of the Lord that he spoke of be? Jesus said that it will be right when they least expect it. And three things are very clear about Jesus' return that he made known. His return will be soon. His return will be unexpected. And his return will be unknown. It will be soon in the sense of God's timing and not ours. For one day for God is like a thousand years, and a thousand years for God is just like one day. But the Bible says that God is not slow in keeping his promise, but patient, bearing with us, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. For every moment that God delays in sending his son is another opportunity for someone to be saved. His return will be unexpected, Jesus said, like a thief in the night. And the day and the hour of his return will be unknown. For Jesus said that no angel, nor any man, nor Jesus, the Son of God himself, knows the day and the hour of his return, but only the Father in heaven. For if Jesus had returned only in 2016, I myself would not have been saved. I was in church every week at every youth retreat they had to offer and wore a cross around my neck, but in my heart I really did not know and seek God. Though we don't know the day and the hour, we are called to be prepared. And one thing is for sure, that God is calling our attention through this. Though God does not inflict disease or cause a virus, Throughout history, it has been made very clear that the Lord has worked through these plagues and natural disasters to bring judgment and accomplish His sovereign will in the earth. The Lord is God over all creation in every nation in each generation, and He rules and reigns over the earth in sovereignty and in authority. If this is part of the hand of God's judgment, it would not be the first time. Many would ask, would God really judge this earth? And see, if we were simply in the Word of God, we would know the answer to this question. For Jesus said that his return will be like the days of Noah with the ark, that many people would be marrying, giving in to marriage, partying, and being completely ignorant of what is going on. And just like the flood that God sent upon them unexpectedly, with no person that would survive except Noah and a few of his family members. But we are not in the word of God. We have turned away from him. The only reason why God would bring about such judgment upon the earth is because of the corruption, the wickedness, and the immorality that is sweeping through the nations. We have lost the fear of God, and we ourselves have surrounded ourselves by what we want to hear. 
The Bible says that this would happen, and the truth of who God has revealed himself to be would be lost. Many have turned from God and become their own God, living life how they want to live, unaware that the very number one command in the satanic Bible is to do as thou wilt, do as you want. But the Bible says that everyone in that day did right in their own eyes, but it brought about the consequence upon them. And the Bible says that there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end it leads to death. God did not create us for judgment, but for a perfect relationship with him. He gave us a choice giving us the opportunity to continue to live life with him or to walk off in our own in sin. And the punishment for sin is death. Our world is straying further from God and is becoming increasingly more wicked with active death camps around in other countries and human and sex trafficking in the very birthplace of our own nation. See, it would be perfectly fair for God to bring about his righteous judgment for us who deserve the destruction that we have caused. But this judgment God is going to bring is only because he's already given his grace. He's already demonstrated his love, but so many still ignore it. The world says that the only certainty we have in this life is death. But the Bible says, though the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The truth is that people living apart from God, still dead in their own sin, who have not yet given their lives to Christ, are just as much in danger now as they were before any of this and the virus ever started. It's just that now we become a little bit more aware of it. But God does not de desire to bring judgment upon anyone. He desires that all people would humble themselves, confess their sins, and turn to him so that he could save them. God desires a relationship with you. Yet God has already done all that he, he could do. He's offered forgiveness to you and I. The truth is that God has been gracious. For he so loved the world that he gave his one and only son to die upon the cross that we could have forgiveness and to be brought back to him. While we were still far from God, living dead in our own sin, he sent his son as the savior of the world. Nothing that we could ever do could earn God's forgiveness and we can't work for the love of God. But when there was no way for us to get to him, God came to us. God put himself into the very flesh that he created, stepped into the time that he began among the people that he formed on the ground that he made. He came and lived the life that we couldn't live, but died the death that he did not deserve so that we could have the life we could not earn. He suffered everything that we go through beyond any measure that we could imagine, yet he did it without sin so that one day he could step forth and give his life on a cross for our sin. And he was raised to life again. Hundreds of years before Jesus even came, God was revealing through the prophets that he would send the Savior into the world who would suffer death for our forgiveness, but be raised to new life again. Jesus himself told his disciples three times that he would be delivered into the hands of men, that he'd be flogged and mocked and spit on and beaten and persecuted, handed over to death, but on the third day that he would rise again. And that's exactly what he did. Jesus Christ is alive at the right hand of God the Father. He is calling us back to him. Through the prophets hundreds of years before, and through Jesus, they spoke of his death, his resurrection, and his return. Jesus himself told of the signs that would accompany his coming. He told that there would be false religious leaders that would come in his name deceiving many. He said that there would be wars and rumors of wars. He said that there would be unrest among the nations, earthquakes and famines, that Christians would be killed for their faith, which is occurring right now in other countries like Saudi Arabia and China. There would be much breaking of laws and a continuation of sin everywhere, so much so that the hearts of many would return cold. One thing is for certain, that this is a wake-up call to turn to God. Whether we pass from this earth because of a virus now, or then through starvation, another outbreak, or we're still standing for the great, glorious, and dreadful return of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we will all stand before God and have to give account that all will appear before the judgment seat of Christ for the things done in the body, whether good or bad. Our lives will be laid out like a film reel before God. Every motive, intention, ambition, and desire of our heart will be seen naked and bare before the eyes of him who must give account. And we all deserve to be declared guilty, for we have all sinned and fallen short. Every one of us has been separated from God by our disobedience. But it is the good news 
that for the very sin that separates us from him is exactly why God sent his son. That if you choose to humble yourself, to confess your sins, to turn away from the life that we once lived apart from God, and to receive Christ, the price that he paid, the death that he died, the life that he gave, and choose to entrust your heart to God, then you can be forgiven, you can be restored, your slate can be washed clean, and you could have reconciliation, redemption, renewal, and restoration with God. Jesus Christ desires to be your Lord, to be your Savior, and to bring you back as God's child. Will we humble ourselves and turn to Him again? Jesus is the only one who can save you. He is alive right now at the right hand of God. And we no longer have to fear judgment, for we can stand before God assured of our forgiveness because of what He's already accomplished. Will you choose life or death? For our price has been paid, our death has been died, the life has been given. Will you receive him or reject him? The Bible says that whoever receives the Son of God receives life. But whoever rejects the Son of God will not see life and God's wrath will remain on them. Come to Christ. Lord God, I pray throughout all nations, in every generation, over all creation, that you reign as Lord, sovereign in all things. God, I know that everything is according to your will when we choose to trust you. You sent your son down to die for our forgiveness. You paid our price and you gave your life. And we receive this gift of forgiveness. We turn away from our sin and we come back before you, God. Be our Lord. Be our Savior. We step off the throne of our own heart and we give you the righteous place that you deserve as King. Have your way in us. Thank you for loving us enough to give your life. And we give ours to you. Fill us with your spirit and lead us to live from this day forward for you. In Jesus' name, amen.